What's up and welcome back to the channel. This week I'm talking about a topic that actually seems to get quite a bit of attention, but from what I've seen isn't usually framed properly. All right, so what do I mean by that? First of all, we're talking about how to get the cinematic film look. Now, this isn't gonna be a here's a list of steps to get a film look video. I want it to be much more in depth than that. It's not gonna be a one size fits all, but I am gonna give you principles and things that I think that you should look for in order to achieve a film look. So instead, I'm gonna give you a list of key elements that I think are important to nailing that look and I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on what to do when you're analyzing your own footage when you're trying to create a look. So there's no denying that film has a certain set of qualities that we all find very enjoyable, whether that's because we've gotten used to them or just because they look really pleasing to the eye. And if we look at films that actually use the film look that either were shot on film or have emulated it, there is something, a set of elements that I think we can all easily point to and say that's what makes a film look. Or at the very least, these are all elements that film has in common. Now, these elements could be things like film grain or that cinematic highlight roll off even in harsher lighting conditions. These could be things like um, halation or um, just the overall feel and texture of film. One thing that we obviously can't deny though is that if you look at any two shots, none of them look exactly the same. So all of that to say that I think sometimes it's a little bit of a misnomer that you know, you can just apply a certain, a certain formula or you can apply a certain LUT or a look and that automatically gives you a look that you can define as the film look. Now, like I said, film has certain common qualities that we can look at and point to and say, these are things that film has in common. And there are also aspects of it now that we can emulate and improve on as well, but there's no one size fits all. So that's why in this video, I think it's more important that you learn what to look for and the key elements in getting a film look. And then you can take all of these principles and apply it to your footage as well, right? Because honestly, we're creatives and that's the fun part of doing this job. It's taking all of these elements, everything that we've learned, applying it to our own footage and our own projects and coming up with a look that's all unique to us that we can say hits all those factors that we're looking for and creating a look all onto our own. Nowadays, for example, technology is evolving faster than any time in history. And we have things like digital sensors that can capture an ever increasing range of information that we can then use and manipulate digitally to create a really unique film look. And that also gives us greater latitude in post as well. In recent history, we've also seen such a variety of ways to actually achieve this look, including actually shooting on film, like for example, Christopher Nolan's movies, or doing something like acquiring the footage digitally and then scanning it back into film, or shooting digitally from the start and then manipulating the image and emulating a film look all digitally all through the process, like so many major blockbusters do. And I think all of these are valid ways of doing it and all of them have different feels to them. But I think at the end of the day, we can get really close regardless of what we're doing. All right, so let's take a look at a few practical steps that you can actually do and resolve. So this is the footage we're working with, although you can practice on any image really. This one has all the elements in it for me, like these specular highlights here, which we'll end up doing something with as well. So first up, I'm going to do this in Asus CCT just because I like working with it. Let's go down here to project settings and I like to work in nodes. So I'm gonna leave this unmanaged with DaVinci YRGB. So we're going to specify what we want ourselves in our nodes and Resolve isn't gonna do it for us. I am gonna put the timeline color in ACES CCT, however, so that my tools behave properly, since that's what I'm working in. And output, I want to output to Rec 709 Gamma 24. Now, let's start building out the nodes. I'm gonna have two up here. Let's be organized and label them too. So uh, first up, I have grain on the first one, and I'll do halation on the second. I'm doing it up here because it's on the raw image. I just found that that works best for me, especially trying to emulate film negative grain and halation. On the next node, I have my first color space transform. It's the ACES transform, so pick area log C going in and ACES CCT going out. My next node I'm leaving for primaries. These are the big sweeping adjustments like exposure balancing, saturation, and that sort of stuff. Next node is going to be for secondary adjustments, so this would be things like versus curves. My next one here, I might not actually touch, but I like to leave this for global adjustments. So after everything is done, I might want to go in and make some overall image adjustments, and that's the node that I do it in here. Third row here, I have sharpening on the first one and then any vignette adjustments if I need it. 
Lastly, down here, I have my last transform and then the, my final node I'll use for my LUT that I'm working under. So let's go in and set that first. I'll wanna go to CST first and let's change gamma only to pick ACES CCT first and ARI log C out. Then for the LUT, I'll right click and let's do film looks and then Kodak 2383 here in the film looks and I'll pick D65 for now. Right away, we got contrast and we've got a certain color palette coming in. I'm liking this so far. This goes to my second point after establishing a node workflow, and that's working under a LUT. I love LUTs, especially when they're from a reputable source. That's preferably a colorist that knows what they're doing and is actually crafting good quality 3D LUTs. You'll find that not all LUTs are equal, and there are a lot of bad ones out there, so just be careful. Resolve is a great place to start because they include the Fuji and Kodak LUTs for free for both the P3 and Rec. 709 workflows, so that's great. Now, let's make some initial adjustments and go to our primaries first. Overall, our exposure is a little low, so let's grab offset and move that up until we're comfortable. Also, I'll be watching my scopes down here to make sure I land where I want. Now, it's a bit of a balancing act between pulling everything up, but I want to pull my highlights down a bit just to maintain that contrast that I want. I might also go in there and adjust the contrast just a little bit further as well. Obviously, go a little bit further and then kind of dial it in. So that looks good to me in my eye. Let's just mess with saturation a bit, and for this I want to pull out my scopes too, and watch my vector scope just to see where my colors are falling. I think overall we're also leaning heavy towards yellow. I just want to correct that a little bit and move it more towards the orange side that I feel represents film a little bit better. A good way to do this is hue versus hue, so let's go there on my secondaries node. I can dial in yellow here, and then watching my vector scope, I can pull up until we're just reaching that amber orange and pulling out some of that yellow. Now, a little goes a long way here, and if I do a window, you can see I've also corrected my skin tones right on that line here, so we're in a really good spot. When working to create a look, simplicity is really the key. Less is often more, and all the changes are intentional. If you notice, I'm also making very simple photographic adjustments. I'm using things like hue versus hue and color temperature, things that have a real world photographic equivalent. I'm not going in and pushing colors in my highlights or tracking masks or anything like that because I want to use tools cinematographers have access to and that have some meaning in the real world. I find that creates a beautiful, more realistic image. Also, just real quick before we continue here, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and hit the like button down below as well. It really does help me out a lot. I wanna thank you so much to all the new subscribers we've been getting in recently. I think we're just over 650 at this point, and that's really amazing. So like I said, don't forget to hit the subscribe. It really does help me out a lot. All right, now let's go back to primaries real quick, and I'm liking everything so far, but we're heavy into the warms if we look on the vector scope. And that's okay, that's a good look, but I just wanna balance it out just a little bit. So let's grab our color temperature and adjust just a little bit. Maybe even dial it in too far and then pull back a little. Right around negative 90 looks good to my eye. And if you look on the vector scope, we've also balanced out the image a touch more as well. Honestly, this is already looking like a good image to me. Last thing, I just want to take this blue here and just swing it a little bit more towards cyan. So if we go to our hue versus curves again uh, and use hue versus hue, let's target blue and then just ever so slightly pull up a bit until we're right over towards cyan. Remember, with film looks, it's also very often what you don't show that's just as important. If you look at film or what feels like film, it's got a very specific color palette. Cutting out some colors or swinging them a little more in a direction like we just did goes a very long way. All right, so I'm happy with where we are. I'm actually not even going to touch the global adjustments, really. Last sort of finishing touches to bring this together. If we add film grain, let's take a look. I'll pull it over to the node and then I'll press shift F so that we can get a better idea of what we're doing here. Already compared to the image prior, if I put, if I back out here and then turn this node off and then full screen this again, you can see we're very smooth. No texture really from the camera. Now, if we go back and turn this node on, we're getting some texture in here. To me, this is the final touch that sort of pulls the image together. I like to go with 35 millimeter film and let's bump up the strength just a little bit maybe to about there. It's a little more exaggerated on my end, but that's just to make sure that it shows up on YouTube after the compression. I find grain strength is usually the only thing I'll typically have to mess with, otherwise I'm happy there. So here's before and here's after. All right, now let's move over and tackle halation. 
If you look at these specular highlights here, on film, you have an anti-halation backing to film, which is almost like an anti-reflective layer, but what happened a lot of the time was light hitting the film would bounce back from that and then hit the film again on the red layer, which is closest. So what you'd get is a slight glow and a red ring around the brightest parts of the image. It's a small thing, but for me, it's a nice touch. I don't always do this, but for this example, it's a good idea. So let's add it to the halation node. And as you can see, it's already popping up. I'll do just a before and after so you can see if you watch here. Now, if I keep going with the before and after, but just watch the pillar over here and then the talent's face as well. We're getting some spilling over and I wanna cut all of that out. So here on the effects panel, we can activate the affected regions and you'll see it's all over the place right now. So let's go down to threshold here and let's start pulling that up. We're still getting it a little bit here on the cheek, but that's okay. We've cut out, we've cut out most of it. On the region still being affected, we can check fine tune relative spread here. And I just want to bump up the gamma slightly. That just gives us a bit more of a red ring effect since these look like pretty bright lights in the frame. I like messing with the spread too, as it almost diffuses it out a little bit, which I think gives it a nice look as well. So I like that where we kind of ended up. What can sell this effect a little bit more sometimes is going down to the secondary glow settings as well, and just giving that a bit of strength and then messing with the spread again, just to soften out the glow a little bit. All right, so we've come a pretty long way here, but we have a picture that I'm happy with and I think looks pretty cinematic as well. Let's turn everything off and go through what we did. First, we did our input transform, which got us into a working color space. We then did our transform and our LUT, which gives us our base look that we could work under. From here, we jumped up and did the same base adjustments using offset and things like color temperature, contrast, and saturation. We then went to our secondary adjustments and we used our hue versus hue to correct our image slightly. We cut out colors we didn't want and overall achieved a more balanced and filmic look. From there, we put some finishing touches on our image and introduced some film grain and halation to complete our film look. You'll see down here, I didn't really even touch sharpening or vignette. I don't feel like we really needed it in this image. I think it was shot nicely to begin with. We could have done a slight vignette here, but overall, I think this is a great image. All right, so that's where I'm gonna leave it for this week. Now, honestly, the most important thing you can know as a filmmaker is knowing what you want which starts in pre-production, right? That's the most important phase. Are we gonna acquire this on film? Are we gonna acquire the image digitally? And that's really where the most important planning phase takes place. So that's knowing what you want, what kind of look, and what tools you have to achieve that look, and then picking the option that best suits the film that you're making. Now, in color grading, we use the tools that we had available to refine that look and create a look all to ourselves, and we did that all digitally on the back end. Now, we didn't touch a lot on it in this video, but uh, actually a lot of what contributes to the film look too is how you actually acquire the image what actually happens during production of a movie as well, right? So lighting matters, composition matters, how you actually shoot the film and acquire the images plays a very big part in it all coming together in post as well and getting that film look that we're looking for. Until next time though, go out there, try it yourself, go out and create something. A lot of it.